Hello everyone, Elite Cameraman here. Episode 67 Part 4 finally came out after a whole week of waiting and it was crazy. People were asking what could happen in Part 4 since everything already happened in Part 3, but I mentioned in my last video that there was no conclusion and a tease for what's to come and it seems like we really got some huge reveals and were teased on what's awaiting us. There really is so much to talk about and I don't know where to start. The secret agent actually directly interacted with the POV cameraman for the first time. And I need to remind you that if we combine all parts for episode 67, it turns out to be around 6 minutes. But if we remove the same scenes from each episode, it's probably closer to 5 minutes. Defouk will most likely upload the full episode 67 tomorrow, and I'll analyze it if there are any changes to it. This also was the longest time we stayed on just one POV cameraman, and maybe we might get to see the same POV in episode 68 as well, which would be a first. This episode's ending really was the start of a new journey for the few agents that have entered the Skibidi bunker, and don't worry, we'll talk about every detail in this episode. But before we do that, let's try to get to 130,000 likes this time. Also, YouTube tells me that 73.4% of you are not subscribed. If you are not subscribed, make sure to subscribe so that we can get this percentage to exactly 69%. Anyways, here we go. This episode started right at the end of episode 67 part 3 where the upgraded Titan TV man lasered scientist toilet's head, but it looks like that wasn't the main body of the scientist toilet as everyone guessed. And right after this, the next scene was changed a little. This also happened in the last two parts, and in the full version of this episode, Da Fook will most likely use the latter one. There was one thing that's weird, though. In the short version of episode 67, part 3, at this exact scene, Titan TV Man said something different compared to the original episode, but here it was reverted back to the original once more. And while the Titans are getting up, he says, that's all, just like he did in the original episode 67, part 3. The main difference in this scene was the Titans getting up, and this really did surprise me because I didn't think injured Titan cameraman had any energy left at this point. But there was another subtle change that many might not have noticed. In the original Part 3, Titan TV Man's core doesn't move, but here we can clearly see it changing its shape, and the POV cameraman doesn't zoom into his face. Right after this upgraded Titan TV Man gives a new lens protector to injured Titan cameraman, I think they might have been watching the POV cameraman back at the TV man base, and maybe before leaving the scientist TV man cooked up a new lens as fast as possible. Because otherwise, why would he carry a lens protector with him, unless he pulled it out from inside the scientist's toilet when he stabbed him in the head? After this scene, we get the first interaction between Titan TV man and Titan speaker man after episode 47, and we all know the events that transpired in that episode. Titan Speaker Man actually waves at Titan TV Man, and it seems like he is more friendly towards him because he may be scared of him after he stabbed him in the face, even though he was infected at the time. Titan TV Man truly is our king at this point, and funny enough, right after Titan Speaker Man waves at him, Titan TV Man looks at Titan Speaker Man and says, no stabbing in reverse while waving his finger. This really did give me a giggle when I first heard it. Here you go, listen to it yourself. In this scene, we also get a better look at his upgrades because we get a side view. First of all, it seems like the TV screens on his arms can turn 270 degrees, and they may actually be useful while fighting more than one opponent. If you remember episode 47, he was ganged up on and struggled a lot. These two screens on his arms may be moving separately from everything else, and their real use is most likely for defense purposes. We also can see that he has more protection on his monitor now, even though he probably doesn't need it anymore. I'm sure that the scientist TV man made a monitor that won't be broken easily this time. We also get to see his new jetpacks a little, and it looks like they have some purple accent to it, just like everything else on his body now. Right after this, a huge explosion noise can be heard, and the POV cameraman suddenly looks right to see one of the craziest scenes we've ever seen in this series. I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea what I'll put in today's thumbnail yet, because there were so many crazy things. In this scene, we saw three G-Man toilet clones or robots or imposters or maybe even the real one. I have no idea at this point. Maybe the theory that was going around that there were multiple G-Man from the beginning was true, but I don't think we'll get an answer to that in the near future. 
One thing that looked different about these three G-Man toilets were the faces. The G-Man toilet we know has been beaten so many times that his whole face is cracking, and he looks old at this point, but these three look completely normal, and the version of G-Man toilet when he was first introduced. They also talk and smile a lot more weirdly compared to the original G-Man toilet we know. So I think none of these G-Man toilets are the original, and they may have been actually produced after the clone we saw in episode 65. Maybe Scientist Toilet deemed that experiment to be a success and started creating a G-Man toilet army, and this is just the beginning. There are so many possibilities, but one thing is for sure. Upgraded Titan TV Man was so ready to fight all of them alone. Because in the next scene, Blood literally whips out his blade without any care and rushes into the battlefield. What a furking Chad. This Blood is the definition of a protagonist. His blade literally glitches out the camera when it's near it. The power levelers must be going crazy, because there is literally no one that can stand in his way right now. We also see him make different faces on all his monitors right before he jumps. Blood literally had a Yu Wu face on his crouch area. Before we continue, Let's take a look at all the G-Man toilet clones one by one, because it seems like they are following a theme and this might give us an idea of what we might see next. The first G-Man toilet clone we see is the closest one to the original, and has 11 lasers, and it kind of looks like the design G-Man toilet had in the troll leaks where he went against the so-called Microwave Man. If you're watching this Dafuk, we better get a microwave race later in the series. Titan Microwave Man would cook up anyone in his way. The next G-Man toilet clone we see is a plane toilet, and it seems like he has four rocket launchers that can shoot four rockets each. This probably is the least strong among this goofy trio because he will most likely run out of rockets pretty fast unless he has a way of sourcing them. The next G-Man toilet clone we see is a claw G-Man toilet. This kind of seems like Scientist Toilet has been trying to upgrade different toilets into G-Man toilets, and we might even get to see something like a UFO G-Man toilet or Mutant G-Man toilet. It's probably going to be a lot more crazy going forward because this episode proved that the toilets are a lot more prepared compared to what we thought. After seeing upgraded Titan TV Man, injured Titan Speakerman shrugs at the injured Titan Cameraman and starts going into the battlefield as well, even though he is still damaged. And it's the same case for Titan Cameraman, but he seems to be a lot more hurt and is walking very slowly and seems kind of sad and tired. This really puts stuff into perspective because it seems like they care enough to actually sacrifice themselves for the cause. But even with all these things, this was the moment this episode really started because while Titan Cameraman was heading into the battlefield, the POV Cameraman's camera started glitching slowly and we got our first interaction with the secret agent. He slowly turns to the camera while saying, look at your left, and it also writes, look at your left, on the screen as well. Here you go, listen to it yourself. This was a crazy moment in the series because we actually heard him. He also had a small smile when he showed up. I feel like we might get to see him actually talk to some of the Alliance members face to face in the near future. I checked a whole episode a couple times to see if he was in it other than this one encounter, but I couldn't find him at all. But we indeed found someone else because the second the POV cameraman turns to his left, we see the scientist toilet's actual body, and it seems like he was controlling the big body from the inside. Maybe it's the same with G-Man toilet as well because we know he used to be smaller. The scientist toilet actually looks mad here and is actually surprised when he sees the POV cameraman looking at him and literally starts using his laser the second he sees us. It's clear that this is his real body, otherwise he probably wouldn't have been this scared enough to shoot a large cameraman the second he saw him. This is the reason why I said scientist toilet wasn't scared enough in the last episode. Here he actually seems to think that he is in danger, and the second POV cameraman pulls out the rocket launchers, blood dips inside the bunker and the POV cameraman starts following him, while on the way we can see the injured large speaker man from episode 63, he really is the true form of Jigachad because of the actions he took in both episode 63 and episode 67 part 4, I can assure you that he'll never be forgotten, but we'll get to him later in the video. Right when we are trying to go in, we can see that the box on the left sparks once again, just like it did in episode 67 part 1, and I mentioned that it might have been tempered by the secret agent. And it seems like I was correct because we get the confirmation later in the episode. Also, if you look carefully, 
Scientist Toilet goes to the left corridor when he enters the bunker, and this probably means that the Alliance might go to the left as well. We somehow make it inside at the last second, but after we get up and look behind, we see the Sigma Large Speaker Man holding the door with all his strength so that the agents can get inside, and it seems like Dark Speaker Man is also here with the Alliance. We can also see the injured plunger cameraman running, but that's not the main detail in this scene. If you look at the left side, the passcode part for this door has been tampered with, and there is a weird green glow. I think we all know what this means, and as I said in my earlier analysis videos, it seems like the secret agent tempered with this door in some way for the Alliance to get inside. There is also the speaker man on the left, and he seems like he has a special weapon compared to all the other speakers. As you guys know, normally speaker men use knives, but this speaker man on the left seems like he has a bat with spikes or metals attached to it. Is this a new candidate for becoming a special agent, or will he die in the upcoming episodes? While the injured large speaker man is holding the door, we can also see the multi-laser G-man toilet shooting his lasers. Even though it's impossible to see what's going on in the battle, it's safe to say that it might continue for a while, and we'll probably never see what happened, because I don't think we are leaving this bunker for a while. We might actually get to see rest of the special agents arriving inside the bunker later on, because they can teleport with my beloved TV woman. She better come inside so that I can see her more. Anyways, the injured large speaker man holds the door enough for the injured plunger cameraman could come in. This speaker man really was the best of us and he did his duties right until the last second. I have maximum respect for you, bruh. Have a nice journey to speakerman heaven. Make sure to like and subscribe to pay your respects to the injured large speaker man. Thanks to him, the agents inside will also get the help of plunger cameraman. Right after this, we see that one of the cameramen brought a plunger with him, and it seems like they were planning to save him, and I did mention this in my episode 67 part 3 analysis. Plunger cameraman surely won't disappoint anyone after this point because the injured large speaker man gave his life away for him. We see the whole squad, but this scene is actually kind of goofy, because the cameraman on the most left tries to get into the frame, kind of breaking the fourth wall, because why would he normally do that since he doesn't have a wall in front of him? Right after this, the POV cameraman looks at the corridor right before the episode ends, but we can actually hear something that sounds like a scream right at the end of the episode. It really seems like we are going to be spending a good amount of time inside this base, because I don't think it'd have this much buildup unless that was the case. And I think it's actually good this way, because this will give us a more condensed storyline for a while, and hopefully we won't have time skips between episodes allowing us to see the whole journey. If you enjoyed this analysis, make sure to like and subscribe. Elite Cameraman out.